Vim, a text editor for writing code where you navigate around the screen with a keyboard instead of a mouse. It's based on the original Unix text editor, VI, which came about in 1976. Then VI Improved, or Vim, followed it in 1991 with a bunch of improvements. But why, in the age of modern IDEs, would you ever want to use a keyboard-based text editor? When you write code all day every day, your fingers should be glued to the keyboard at all times. Every time you touch the mouse, your productivity declines. Learning to code with Vim is like learning to play an instrument. It'll be painful at first, but that pain will lead to more precise and productive code editing in the future. Vim runs in the terminal, and it's installed on almost every machine. And at some point, you'll likely find yourself accidentally dropped into Vim with no way to escape. <laughs> If you find yourself there, you can quit Vim by typing colon Q. That will close an unmodified file, or if it has been modified, you can use Q bang to throw away your changes, or colon WQ to write the changes and then quit. Now that we're out, let's use Vim to open up a file. Currently, we're in normal mode, but we can toggle between different modes like insert, visual, and command line, depending on what we're trying to do. We can move around the text with the arrow keys, or the letters HJKL. If we find a character we want to delete, we can hit X or double D to quickly delete an entire line. If that was a mistake, hit U to undo it. Now currently, the document is kind of hard to read, so let's add line numbers by running colon set number. And now we can navigate to any line with colon number. Now if we want to change some text, we need to go into insert mode by hitting I, and that frees up the keyboard for us to type into the document. Once we're done modifying our code, we can hit the escape key to go back to normal mode, but now, like any good developer, we need to copy and paste some code in here from Stack Overflow. We can paste from the system clipboard by entering plus P into Vim. And now that our software is complete, we can hit colon W to save it, then run the program directly from Vim with colon bang, followed by the shell command we want to run. Congratulations, you're no longer a soy dev, but a true software engineer. This has been Vim in 100 seconds, but stay tuned, because you don't need to ditch VS Code to get the benefits of Vim. That's why I invited a true expert and the instructor of the Vim for VS Code course, Joe Previtt, to take us beyond 100 seconds of Vim. Hello, everyone. I'm Joe, and I will be your guide as we go beyond 100 seconds to discuss why you should learn Vim and how you can leverage it inside your favorite editor, VS Code. First, let's talk about why you should learn Vim. Vim is an evergreen skill, meaning you can learn it once and the knowledge will last with you for the rest of your career. It allows you to work faster and more efficiently within your editor. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. On the left, we have editing with Vim. On the right, we have editing without Vim. As you can see, Vim lets you do more from the keyboard, meaning you get to spend less time editing and more time coding. Now let's talk about how to set up Vim with VS Code. Once you're inside VS Code, head over to the extension panel and search Vim. You should see the first extension called Vim and to make sure it's the right version, double check that it's VS Code Vim Vim and it should have around 2 million installations. Go ahead and install this extension. The next thing we're going to do is set up key repeat. So head over to Google and look up VS Code Vim GitHub. You should see the first link, which is a GitHub repository called VS Code Vim slash Vim. There, you're going to scroll down to the installation section. And here, you'll see instructions for how to enable key repeating. This is a handy thing to add, especially when you're new to Vim, because it'll allow you to hit the key and it will repeat as in if you were to hit J to move down. Find your operating system, I'm on Mac, and then run this in your terminal. And now for the changes to take effect, you're going to want to restart VS Code. To verify that it worked, go ahead and create a new file. And now you should see that your cursor is a little bit wider. Go ahead and hit I, this will put us in insert mode and then hit return a bunch of times, then hit escape, and now try hitting and holding K and see if your cursor moves up. If it moves like this, pretty smooth, then you've enabled key repeating. If it gets stuck, then you may want to try restarting VS Code again or revisiting the installation instructions. Great, now that we have our editor set up, I'd like to teach you a few different commands in Vim. So we'll review some of the ones that Jeff mentioned earlier in the video and then we'll also learn a few new ones. 
So inside VS Code, go ahead and create a new file and save it as hello.md. Now what I want you to do is hit I to enter insert mode and hit return so we add a few lines for us to work with and then hit escape. Great, so the first commands that we're going to talk about are for navigation and they will be H, J, K, and L. So right now we're in command mode. So if we hit K, we'll start moving up. If we hit J, we'll move down. So remember, we just learned K for moving up. I like to think of it as kicking a soccer ball up. I'm kicking upwards on my editor and J for jumping down. Use whatever mnemonic comes to mind to help you remember those. The next we'll talk about our H and L. So I'm gonna write hello world here and you can do the same. So again, the way that I did that was I for insert mode, start typing hello world. And then when you're done, hit escape and you'll be back in command mode. So the first one we'll talk about is H. So if you hit H, you'll start moving to the left. As in you're moving to the beginning of the line, also the H in hello world. Now, once we're there, if we wanna go back right, we start hitting L and that will move us towards the L in world. So again, figure out a mnemonic that's going to help you remember those. For me, I like to think of H as in I'm going home to the left and then L, you would think that would be L for left, but it's actually the opposite of that. So L for right. Great. So now we're, we're feeling comfortable with navigating in Vim. Again, we're in command mode. We're moving up and down with J and K and left and right with H and L. The other thing to, to remember is if you take a look, pause for a second, look at your keyboard, see where the keys are on your keyboard. You should see the H to the left of J and K. So that also helps me remember. And then L is to the right of J and K. So it'll take some time, but once you got those down, you'll be able to navigate seamlessly throughout your editor using Vim. So the other thing I wanna point out is you still have access to your mouse. So you can click to move around. So there's no need to worry about getting stuck in Vim. I'm sure you've heard horror stories, people not being able to exit Vim. Luckily, using Vim inside of VS Code, we're really just using the Vim key bindings. So we don't have to worry, we can close a file, we can navigate. Uh, no need to, to fear being stuck in Vim. Now, the next thing I wanna point out is some editing commands. So we will talk about I, capital I, A, and capital A for editing in a line. So we're gonna go back to our hello world and you'll see right now the cursor is at the end of the line. If I hit shift I or capital I, it'll move me in insert mode at the beginning. So I could write a word like, I don't know, Joe. And then if I hit escape, I'm back in command mode where I can move around. So you'll notice the one thing that I want to point out too, a tip, is a lot of Vim users remap their caps lock key to escape. So instead of caps lock being caps lock when I hit the key, it actually is escape. And so it's a lot more accessible, it's closer, it's right next to my pinky, rather than having to reach to the corner of the keyboard and hit escape. So that's one thing I'd encourage you to look into, uh, remapping your caps lock key to escape if you're serious about learning Vim. So we just covered Capital I, we know that lowercase i is insert mode, right? So now what I wanna talk about is lowercase a. The thing that you gotta pay attention to here is the cursor. Right now it's on top of the exclamation point. So if I hit i, it'll move to the left. And now if I go back, now if I hit a, it'll enter into insert mode, but after the cursor. So like this. So again, uh, if we have like a number two here and we want to add to the beginning and make it 22, we'll hit I, that'll let us insert at the beginning. And now if we want to add to the end, like say I wanted to add uh, period 22, so 22, 22, then I can use lowercase a. So those are very handy when you're inserting letters or making changes uh, in a line. Now the next one that I wanna talk about is capital A. And so this is like appending to the end of the line. So you'll enter insert mode at the end of a line. So here I am, and I wanna add more exclamation points at the end of hello world. So if I hit shift A, it will move the cursor to the end and it will enter into insert mode. So now that I can enter a few exclamation points. Now, if we go back to the beginning, we can do shift I. Now we're insert mode at the beginning of the line. So as, as you can see, the I, capital I, A, capital A are very handy for editing in a line. 
Great. Uh, we've talked about navigation. We've talked about editing in a line. Now the last two that I want to talk about are X and R. And these are handy for making changes while in command mode. If we go back up right here, and so I want to get to the beginning of the sentence. So I'm gonna hit Shift I, hit Escape, because I want to be in command mode. So you'll see that I have four J's, right? I don't really need all of those. So what we're going to do is actually use X to delete those. So X is kind of like X out of character. So I'll hit it three times, one, two, three. And now I have one J, which is correct. So as you can see, we're able to make edits without leaving command mode. So we just talked about X for Xing out characters. Now let's talk about R for replacing characters. So I'm going to go to the H here and I want this to be capital. So I'll hit R and then Shift H, uh, which is just a, a capital H. And now it will replace it. And again, I haven't left command mode. Here, let's do this for 2222. Let's change this to uh, 5222. So we'll hit R and then five. And so basically what it does is it replaces the character under the cursor with the new character that you type in. So we've talked about navigation with HJKL. We've talked about editing in line with I, capital I, A, and capital A. And now I've talked about making changes while in command mode with X and R. I hope you enjoyed that brief introduction to Vim inside VS Code. If you'd like to learn more, head over to vimforvscode.com and check out my course. It's got 100 exercises to help you learn how to use Vim inside VS Code, and we teach you 22 different commands. Use the coupon code FIRESHIP for $5 off. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.